Hey, what's up guys, I'm Nizio Cole, and you know what this video is. It's in the title, it's in the thumbnail. Spoiler review. If you don't like spoilers and you haven't played the game, then click off. You can go watch my non-spoiler review, which I'll have linked in the description, also be on screen. And even if you have played the game, I do recommend that you watch that one first before I get into this one, because this is just all about the story, the characters, everything like that. So originally, when Watch Dogs Legion was announced at E3 2019, it kind of worried me, because I'm like, how is this going to affect the story? Is this going to be like a really impersonal thing, like it's just going to be a bunch of random missions and and stuff like that? But it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Well, for me personally, I get really heavily attached to the characters in a story, and it's really important that there, there's that kind of personality, you know? It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be originally. It still kind of just felt a little disconnected. In this video, I'm going to talk about all of the different storylines and how I felt about them and the important characters. Um, no script, just kind of going off the cuff. Just wrote down a few notes, and uh, yeah, let's get into it. So uh, first, we're going to talk about Bloom and... Uh, Broca Tech by extension, or Broca, bro however you pronounce it, with Sky Larson. Actually, first I actually want to talk about Bagley. Bagley is probably one of my favorite additions to this game. He's funny. I love the little intros when you start the game, and he's like, you know, he just interrupts you. I, I love his kind of like quirkiness, if that a sarcastic manner AI. I love that. Just the idea of Bagley. I love that DeadSec was able to hack this commercial product and turn Bagley against the people who made him. So I thought that was pretty cool. As far as Broca Tech, I think it was really, really disturbing. Especially, I honestly didn't know what I was getting myself into when we went to her mansion and then it was like this underground area with like a simulated version of her mom's house. She turned her dog into a spider bot. She turned her mom into a housekeeping AI and it, it was just, it was traumatic. Like it, it was dark. It was really dark. I, you know, first thought I wanted to, to, you know, just just kill her just instantly because like that sounds horrible that honestly introduced a, a a new fear to me but yeah i'm glad we took her down that was one of the first uh missions in the game one of the first storylines in the game i don't really know it was kind of weird how they gave you the option to kill her or not kill her and it's like i feel like she would die anyways obviously i killed her yeah it'd, it'd just be really weird i don't see why you would want to uh, I mean, just, just judging off of what we saw from her mom and her dog. Like, what kind of person does that? Traps your dying mom inside of a computer? Like, I just, I, I, psychopath. Anyways, uh, that storyline was pretty good. I'd probably give it around a 7, 7 or 8 out of 10. Now moving on to Clan Kelly. I think this one was pretty interesting. I like the uh, the organ selling. Uh, I mean, obviously, I don't like it, but the organ selling storyline. Honestly, Mary Kelly didn't seem that threatening, and neither did her her goons, the people who worked for her. I like the part with Inspector Lau where it's like, you know, well, we gotta take her in. It's like whatever. Let's just let her her slaves deal with her, former slaves deal with her. And I think she got what she deserved. This one, I honestly don't really have any strong feelings towards, and I'll talk about this more later on, but. Yeah, this one was pretty decent. I enjoyed it less. I would say I, I was less enthusiastic to complete the missions for the Mary Kelly storyline than Bloom. So I'll give this about uh, 6 out of 10. Now, as far as Albion goes, Albion is probably one of my... F it definitely, I would say my favorite. I, I've had enough time to reflect on it. It was my favorite storyline in the game. Main reason being, it was just so involved. You actually felt like Albion was a threat. Like, there was, you know, I, I talked about this in the review, the non-spoiler review, but there was Albion propaganda all over the place. Literally, banners every five feet. You couldn't go five seconds without seeing something Albion related. Someone getting beat up or, or put in handcuffs, an Albion truck, uh, the drones everywhere. You know, it just really felt like super, I just felt super immersed in this, like this city that was like controlled by Albion. And it actually, it felt really satisfying taking him down. And and when uh, when you, you released all that, that dirt on him and Nigel barricaded himself in the White Castle and you had to defeat him, as far as final boss battles go, that was a pretty solid one. Kind of hard because, you know, he'd shoot missiles and just con continue shooting him. Also, I didn't know he, that he was in that, that, uh, that thing, uh, the robot shooty McThingy. I didn't know he was in there until after, so I was like, oh, I'm finally done. Oh, never mind. But uh, he wasn't too, uh, I would say it's a, a pretty decent difficulty. I love the, uh, I love the storyline with, uh, what, what's his name? Halish Balaj? I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but the, you know, the guy who was like, 
his right hand man and then went away and then came back to London to take him out. I love that. Uh, I love talking to him and, you know, breaking into his apartment and doing all that stuff. That was pretty fun. You really just felt like a person who just had too much power kind of went a little crazy, a little crazy. I like this backstory, you know, how he wanted to get revenge and make sure everyone's safe. You know, like on paper, it seems like a good idea, but that stuff never really works out like they want it to. Like, oh yeah, I'm gonna super police London. We're gonna have drones everywhere, drones killing people with lasers from the sky, and it's like, okay, that's a little bit. Yeah, so uh, I would definitely give this a nine out of 10. This is this one of my favorite storylines to do. I always wanted to do the next mission to carry on and, and continue to try and defeat Albion. Also, I'm pretty sure, yeah, the, the like, when you had the tiny robot flying things, that was actually one of my favorite missions, flying through the, throughout the computer, burning things and, and destroying the power supply. Uh, that was for the Themis mission, if I remember correctly. But yeah, I really enjoyed that. And for Sirs, I'm just gonna say Sirs was, I was couldn't be happy enough to finish that storyline because honestly, I really it was confusing kind of uh, with Richard and and Emma Child and like I like I feel like I was just going in circles over and over again. So I was just glad to be done with that. Just lock him up. Although kind of weird, you know, you lock him up in our headquarters. What if he escapes? What you know? I don't, I don't know. Uh, not much to say about Sirs. That's probably like a, a 2 out of 10 for me. I, I really didn't enjoy that storyline at all. And now for the last one, Zero Day. Zero Day, honestly, um, was kind of disappointing, but I feel like that's kind of my fault. So I actually got spoiled. Um, spoiled, like, I was like 50% through the game, and I got spoiled that Sabine was in Zero Day, or like the head of Zero Day. And um, yeah, that kind of kind of ruined it for me not gonna lie knowing me i probably wouldn't have caught on to the hints that they were giving that sabine was in zero day but you know it's just like once you hear a spoiler and you're still playing through the game it's just non-stop in your head you can't stop thinking about it and it's like i'd, I'd really love to forget that but yeah it wasn't definitely wasn't a surprise because i was expecting it but knowing me i probably wouldn't have caught on to the hints i what i didn't was actually pretty surprised about is the fact that Sabine was, you know, trying to, uh, got kind of scammed over with Albion, and then, I, I, I like the cutscene where she was talking to Nigel, so then she started DeadSec up back again, and as one of the good guys, uh, her death felt kind of weird, like, why, why was she standing on the, the platform, and why, uh, I, I don't know, she's cool, I liked her accent though. I really like her accent and her character design. I think it's really cool, like the little tattoo makeup things on her face. I thought that was pretty cool. But yeah, in conclusion, I would say that this story definitely isn't as bad as I thought it would be. But in Watch Dogs 1, which still to this day, even after Legion coming out, is my favorite Watch Dogs story of all time. Um, it just felt, it felt personal. It felt, you know, I had a connection to Aiden. I see his motives. I see what, what they're doing. Obviously, DeadSec has motives, but... Aiden Pierce, I felt like I was actually playing as him, you know? I talked about my opinions on the Play As Anyone system in a different video, but I, you know, I like the system, I like how it is, but it just, it just didn't really fit well with the story in my opinion. I like, I, one thing I did like is uh, how every time you would add more people and then there would be a cutscene and uh, you do like the, the team meeting, it'd be more people in the, in the cutscene. I thought that was pretty cool, it kind of showed you building your legion, but yeah, I would probably, uh, whew, this is kind of hard to rank this, but as far as the story goes, I would say, I would say worse than Watch Dogs 2, in my opinion. So Watch Dogs 1's my favorite, then Watch Dogs 2, then Legion. It just felt kind of unorganized, kind of chaotic, in my opinion. But, and again, that is just my opinion. And it probably, you know, just like my opinions on every game, will change the more I play the game and the more times I beat the game. But for now, that's my opinion. As far as the entire game... I would give this an 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed the game. One thing, like I talked about in the other video, was that the lag was just a really big hindrance to the experience and me being able to enjoy the game. And while it has gotten better, I'm just kind of tired of, of game developers releasing broken games. You know, I, I just feel like they could spend a little bit more time on it and just not tell us until it's done. Don't tell us until it's done. That's my stance on it. Don't tell me anything about any game until it's done. Until all the bugs or most of the bugs, like the game breaking bugs are out. You know, the thing is you can test, you can test, I don't know. I don't want to get into it right now, but yeah. Eight out of 10 for Watch Dogs Legion. Story, in my opinion, is worse than Watch Dogs 2, but I still enjoyed it. I still had a, a pretty fun time. So uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. 
Uh, I especially want to hear your opinions on the story and how did you guys feel about it down in the comment section below. Make sure to like the video and subscribe if you want more Watch Dogs or just gaming content in general. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Peace.